Hi, welcome to a new video. Today we want to talk about the maximum likelihood estimation for the Bernoulli distribution. I want to give you the derivation and then we will confirm the results in TensorFlow probability. Okay, so we are again talking about the Bernoulli distribution. Recall our simple example of the weather, which can be good and which can be bad. So the weather, shorthand W, is one of these two, it's bad or good. So it can be zero or one if you encode this. And this was our Bernoulli. And recall what was the probability density distribution and P of W was theta to the power of W times one minus theta to the power of one minus W. So the question now is that we have a data set but we don't know the theta. So let's say we are given a data set. So a data set with D and for example, we observe um, bad, good, good, bad, bad, good, and so on. But we don't know theta. So we don't know with which probability good weather appears, but we have a sequence of observations. And here is where our maximum likelihood estimation comes in. So the theta, what is the theta? And we can get them by maximum likelihood estimation or short MLE. Also recall what is the likelihood of our data set. So the likelihood was the probability of the data set itself. So it's the probability of the data set and the probability is the product over all these entries. So this here is the zero of entry and it goes all the way to the n minus one entry because we have n samples. And this is the product from i to zero, from i to zero to n minus one of p of w is our observation. Okay. And this is what we will define as a capital L given the data set or like of the data set, semicolon, the parameter. And the likelihood, of course, depends on the parameter because this defines the likelihood of the data set. And our maximum likelihood estimation is associated with minimizing this likelihood function. However, it is mostly more convenient to work in the so-called log likelihood. This has one big advantage, especially when you have big data sets, they're becoming really unlikely. So it's just because there are a lot of samples inside a data set. And at a certain point, one is reaching the limit what a particular value in a computer can take, but logarithm can take wider ranges of magnitudes. So we are working in log likelihood. And the log likelihood is defined with a small l based on the data set, again, also on the theta. And it is just the logarithm applied to our big L given theta. So what we have, we have the logarithm applied to the product from i is zero to n minus one over p of w is our observation. Okay, what is this? Let's um, try to go to the next step here. And we apply the logarithm to a product. And by the rules of the logarithm, um, this turns into a sum of the logarithms. So this is equal to the sum from i equals zero to n minus one over the logarithm of our probability of the particular data set. And this is also called the log probability. And it is defined for our particular distribution as the logarithm of P of W is, and we recall what was the definition of the Bernoulli, this one here. So it was the logarithm of theta raised to W times one minus theta raised to run one minus W. Okay. So we have a product, so we can split this into two in a sum. So we have the logarithm of theta to the power of W 
plus the logarithm of 1 minus theta raised to 1 minus w. And then we know once we have an exponent inside of logarithm, this goes outside of the logarithm. So we have this is w times the logarithm of w plus 1 minus w times the logarithm of 1 minus theta. Oh, sorry, this is of course the logarithm of theta. Okay, so then let's define our log likelihood is the small l of d semicolon theta, and we have our sum going from i0 to n minus 1, and this here is, again, we have to plug in our observation, so this is small w times log of theta, and here we have a product, so let's do the parentheses in order that the sum is applying to both of the components in here, and here we have a 1 minus w i times the logarithm of 1 minus theta. And now we have our log likelihood and we can then define the optimization problem and we say that the theta star in order to denote our fitted parameter is the arc maximum of overall thetas within the range of 0 to 1 over the log likelihood function. So we are looking for a maximum. And this then calls for how we're finding maxima. We are taking the first derivative and we're setting it to zero. So take derivative, take derivative and set to zero. Okay. So then let's start, take our log likelihood and differentiate it with respect to theta. So what we have is we have the, the derivative with respect to theta over our sum going from zero to n minus one. And here we have, again, what we have had up here. And here we're now asking our question what happens. And the thing is, since both are linear operators, we can change the orders. So we can move our differentiation inside of our summation. So we have the sum from 0 to n minus 1 over the derivative with respect to theta of wi log theta plus 1 minus wi logarithm 1 minus theta. Okay, then we again have a sum here, so we can split our derivative to both sums, and then we can go further and take the derivative of oh, both of these um, components here, and if we take the derivative of the logarithm of theta with respect to theta, this is of course 1 over theta, and here we take the derivative of the logarithm of 1 minus theta with respect to theta. And this is 1 over 1 minus theta. So we have the sum from i equals 0 to n minus 1 over wi over theta plus 1 minus wi over 1 minus theta. And then we see we forgot something since we have an inner derivative. Um, so we take the derivative of this with respect to theta, giving us 1 over 1 minus theta. And the inner derivative is minus 1 because we are differentiating with respect to theta. So we actually have a minus here. Then let's cross multiply in order to unify the denominators. So we are getting wi times 1 minus theta minus theta 1 minus wi over theta times 1 minus theta. Okay, next we can then multiply the brackets and get the following. This is wi minus wi theta minus theta plus theta wi 
over theta times one minus theta. And here we can see, well, minus wi theta plus theta wi is obviously cancels itself. And then we get the sum from i is zero to n minus one over wi minus theta over theta times one minus theta. And this has to be zero because recall, this is our derivative with respect to theta. And if this is zero, then we can ignore the denominator here because we can multiply with it and then zero times it will cancel. Okay, then we can go further and write down we have the sum from i is zero to n minus one over wi minus theta, it has to be zero. And now let's split the summation over these two components, which will be the sum from i is zero to n minus one over wi minus the sum from i is zero to n minus one over theta is zero. And then we can bring the summation to the other side and we get the sum from i is zero to n minus one over wi. And on the other side, we have some same sum, but over theta. Well, and we see theta does not depend on i, so we can directly evaluate the sum. And the summation from i is zero to n minus one is n. And so on the right hand side, we will get n times theta. So we have i from zero to n minus one over wi is theta times n. And then we can rearrange this so we can divide by n and get theta is one over n times i from zero to n minus one over wi. And this is our theta maximum or this is our theta MLE. This is the maximum likelihood estimate. And if you look at this really sharply, then you see, maybe you're familiar with this. This is just the mean of the data set. Okay, now we want to confirm on this and look at it with TensorFlow probability. Therefore, I'm in a terminal and I open up an interactive Python session. First, I will import a package in order to suppress TensorFlow warnings. Then we need TensorFlow itself. And we need TensorFlow probability. And here we go. Now, since we don't have any data set, we have to create it. And therefore we create a model with a known probability, but then we forget about this probability. So we call this weather, and this is TensorFlow probability dot distributions dot Bernoulli. And let's start with a probability of 0 0.8. And then we can sample the weather, for example, 100 times in order to get a data set. So our data set is weather dot sample 100 times. And then we said that our maximum likelihood estimate for the beta value is the mean. So we use the tensorflow dot reduce mean command in order to reduce our data set to a mean. And we see, ah, well, it's zero. We have a problem, but this is due to the fact that our um, output is discrete. So it's encoded as an integer. And in the reduction operation, we, the tensorflow does not change the type. So we have to cast our data set. So tf.cast, and we cast it into a float, and then we should get a value, and it's 0 0.74. And now you might ask yourself, well, it's not 0 0.8, what is the problem here? And the thing is that our data set is not representing the entirety of the distribution. So we might need more data in order to be sure about the maximum likelihood estimate. So I will swap out dataset with weather.sample 
and we again sample 100. And here we say, oh, well, we're lucky. In this new sample, we actually got it. But if we do it once again, it's still off and so on and so forth. But we can be more sure about our estimate if we have more data. So if we are going from 100 samples to 10,000 samples, for instance, we see that we still don't fully hit 0 0.8, but we are getting closer to it and our deviations are in the third digit after the comma. And if we go even more crazy, and if we go to 1 million, then we see, well, our estimate is really sharp and we can hereby confirm that the derived mean is the maximum likelihood estimate for the Bernoulli distribution.